um, kind of a basic description of what Gabriel looks like, um, as well as your basic story, kind of what happened. Would you like me to provide what's listed on his missing poster at National Center for Missing and Exploited for the description, and then you go ahead and give an add to that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, date of birth, May 3rd, 2009. Missing, listed as missing December 27th, 2009. Um, his height is two feet tall even, so 24 inches. Blue eyes. Um, he's white. Uh, nine months old now. Uh, weighs approximately 20 pounds. Light brown hair, missing from Tempe. Okay. Um his eyes are a little bit droopy to the outer edges of his eyes. They kind of droop down a little bit. Um, his chin kind of sinks, not really the chin part, but you know where you would have teeth, like say you had teeth and you pulled your teeth out, how your lip would go inward. It, it's his bottom lip and it kind of goes inward, you know, and so it kind of makes his chin come out a little bit at the bottom, but inward towards the mouth at the lips, you know. And he sucks on his bottom lip a lot. Um, if he doesn't have his bottom lip to suck on, then, you know, if he's got a pacifier, then he'll suck on his bottom lip. Um, or if you put your fingers in his mouth, he'll he'll bite your fingers because he's, he was teething when we saw him last. Oh, my gosh, this is really hard. <laughs> um, he, he, was a pretty, he was a pretty boy. Yeah, pretty, he was. He was a pretty boy. Mm -hmm. He was a pretty. He he is is still a pretty boy. I, He's a good I mean, no matter what, you know. So he okay, and his he had pads for feet and hands. His hands were big old pads with long fingernail long fingers. So like, if you could imagine, like he would have been like a, a what's it called a quarterback. He would have been a quarterback. I mean, his he could catch a football when he grows up. I know he could because he had this big old pad for a hand with these long fingers, you know. Yeah, and and I interrupt you real quick here, Deb. Do you have a picture? Do I have a picture? Um, yeah, I'll give you his missing poster okay. in Skype here. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead. Oh. Another important thing, too, is the top of his chest from the belly button up until his shoulders um, came upward and outward. And I don't know if it's because of constipation or not. I know that in the nine days that we had him, finally around day five, um, he hadn't had a bowel movement. And it was about four or five days, and I got I went to the pharmacy and got him, like, one of those baby um, – it's like a little laxative enema thing. Um, and I got about five or six rocks, that, like literally rocks coming out of him. And he hadn't gone to the bathroom. And um, it was very, very rare that he would go to the bathroom even after that. So I constantly massaged him. But after that day, um, that, that fullness up in his chest and abdominal, upper abdominal area sort of went down a little bit and was more soft. Um, but I have a feeling... Uh, in his in his lifetime, um, he's been pretty impacted, and, and I know that sounds weird because I'm a colon therapist, but you know I'm I'm serious. He he seemed to be very very impacted for a seven month old baby when we had him. He was seven months, and that's not you know he shouldn't have been that way. So he he must have suffered some kind of emotional trauma or something, in my opinion, to be so impacted like that. You know, right. Would you like to hear the the basically the story now? Right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. Okay. I was in an airport, and I'm going to give you the real short version, okay? Because it would take me two and a half hours to tell you the story or more. Um, I was in an airport in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I met her there on a layover. She was crying and distraught. Um, long story short, um, you know, finding out that she wanted to put the baby up for adoption, her grandmother wanted her to adopt the baby out, and Logan wouldn't sign papers. So um, they couldn't do it. So she was on her way back to Tennessee. Um, I and gave her my information. Back to Phoenix, Arizona, not Tennessee. When you first met her, she was in Tennessee. I'm sorry, I said Tennessee. This was when I first met her. This was, um, I believe, in July. 
right, Jack? Was it July? Yes, I believe it, I believe it was July, yes. Okay. So I was coming back from the IAX convention. So we met in Indianapolis on our way. Both our both of us were on our way back to Arizona. Um, and I, you know, I found out she wanted to adopt the baby out. The grandmother had tried. She had tried. And um, it wasn't going to happen because Logan wouldn't sign papers. So I gave her all of my information, my website, my email address, phone numbers, everything. Uh, went home and cried because she never did call me back. And then finally on December the 8th, she finally called me and said, are you ready to adopt him? And I was like, what? <laughs> and I already had a baby that was getting ready to be born that Tuesday that, that we were going to adopt that I had already formed a bond with, you know. Okay. And um, so anyway, I, we went to her house the next day on the 9th, December 9th, and we stayed there probably three to four hours sitting there talking with her. She, you could tell she had been crying a lot, um, you know, just eyes puffy and red, and she had tears, and she'd wipe them away. And, you know, we talked a lot, and um, she said that this is definitely something that she's been wanting to do since she's been pregnant. Um, the father's name is Logan, and he um, refused to do it most of the time, but every now and then he would say okay, and, and they just weren't ever on the same page. Um, I guess at this point she was tired of his of a good life, and she was afraid for the baby to be with the father because of there was a lot of things that she wouldn't tell us um, that she didn't want to talk about. And um, all we know is that from the information that she showed us and gave us, you know, showing her parenting classes and, you know, her the shots up to date for the baby and everything that she's done for the baby. And then, you know, of course, she showed us, you know, where to go to look for his record to find out all the horrible things he's done. So, um... We had a, uh, at, at that particular point, we had some uh, fairly, uh, as you can imagine, some very serious fears and some some uh, uh, wonderment about uh, how could have, I mean, uh, it's hard enough to understand one at birth giving up a child, but after seven months, there must be some kind of a bond there. Uh, so I had some definite uh, hard questions for her. Uh, I got over, we got over there and, and, uh, we played with the baby and, and I began to ask her questions as to why. I mean, uh, why, why are you, I mean, what, what is this gonna, what will this do for you? You know, if you're just gonna stay status quo, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not interested in taking and being your, uh, the person you hand your child off so you can just go out 